Hi, it is I, John underscore Silva underscore your favorite streamer. How you doing? You look nice today, chat. Wow, Pogs, what an amazing stream. Uh, Sangir is asking, uh, I would like to ask, how does Zeronis do this clean, soft, and bright style? Uh, and then the link number one is the, the guy on the top here. Uh, even his sketchy stuff, he has this quote-unquote uh, clean look to it, like Lux's back here, which is the one at the bottom, the, the, the bottom girl. So I was thinking on how I was gonna um, how I was gonna do this. So I decided that let's take Lux uh, to the same level of finish as the top, and I can go through like all of the steps, pretty much, right? So I'll just do the 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 head though, not the whole thing. Um, so first things first, he um, there's two things that I think are happening. No, actually, I'm wrong. I was gonna say that he has a has color for his uh, line art, but it's the it's actually the overlay or the the color dodge doing. So let's draw Lux first. Her face, right? It all begins with the line art, and here's the face, and then. We'll do the hair, wait, the eyes, the nose. So here's the thing. He actually doesn't have much, I mean, he has, a, he has a lot of line art, but in areas that there's a lot of volume, a lot of gradients, you wanna keep your line art to a minimum. Um, like if you look at the image on the top, the the helmet guy, um, at a small scale you can't even see the line art except for a couple of areas here and there. But uh, and the reason you achieve that or it it'll help you later on is by breaking your line art a lot. So what that means is instead of doing one continuous line, it has a lot of spaces to it, and the thinner you make it the more a gradient and this, the whole softness slash clean look uh, will, um, the, the more apparent that's gonna be. Um, so, size of your brush, so like make it thin, plus break your line art. Uh, once you add the gradient, you'll be able to uh, have a successful uh, clean look. Also, try to avoid any hatching like this. Um, you can see he does that in his rougher sketch because it's just a sketch. But like even then, if you are supposed to do that, just do it like once or twice, and like this is okay. You know, like that's fine. Uh, but if you do way too much, then is is just not gonna work out. All right. So let me continue here. The lips. All right. Uh, I, he doesn't even draw the the bottom lip either. I'm like squinting at this, but I could just zoom in. But I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. He he even just like. Doesn't even draw the bottom lip. Um, now, I don't know. I'd have to check his process. But I don't know if he actually draws everything. And then when he's painting, he erases the line art and just keeps parts of it. Because that's something that a lot of artists do, like myself included. I'll like draw a lot more. But once I have color under the line art, I'll go in there and I'm kind of like just erasing most of it. So it could be both both ways. It's something to always keep uh, keep in mind. Um, another thing that helps with cleanliness, so what makes something clean? Let me talk about it while I'm drawing this. Gradients 
and generally shape wise anything that's round can make it uh clean so for example the lux at the bottom even though she's like a sketch she has a lot of like her hair is very fluffy it's very round like you you're not drawing like spiky thing i mean she does have the shoulder spike stuff uh but then that's that's uh and the same is with the helmet the helmet has a lot of spiky parts but then the gradient on those spiky parts make it look very clean uh just you don't have to go much further from reality when your desk is full of cheeto dust like and you finally clean your dirty ass fucking desk maybe have a, a bit of mountain dew spew like spewage in there or how do you say it? like just you have it spilled what do you do? You clean it. And once you clean it, there's this, hopefully, there's a smooth, maybe even reflective surface. I mean, depends if your desk is like matte or, or glossy. But anything that sort of gives reflection and ha just has a soft gradient to it, we perceive it as clean. Because to the touch, that would be the case as well. You don't have to think too far from reality to uh even get your even get your answer you know so i'm just gonna like drawing here this um i'm trying to be as, as accurate as possible while also being fast but you know what you know you know what happens when when i try to do that it's not gonna be exactly the same um, I'll draw, I'll draw, you know what, I'll draw the eyes though. Keep you, keep you entertained. Um, another thing is that the texture he adds, he add, he does add texture, but that it's super minimal. It is omega, omega minimal. And um and subtle. Of course, I'll talk more about it once once we get there. But uh, let's draw the eyes. I don't know if he paints. I actually don't know if he paints the eyes or he just uses a really big brush for this. I've I actually never seen Zeroni's process. Usually, uh, for most artists, you guys request. Uh, decodes I know how they paint so it's easier for me to answer but um, I do follow Zeroni's work just I've never been like really interested in, in having the same process as him alright it's kind of like good enough I'd say I think he uses a definitely just a round brush, like a sharp round brush like this. I think so. And uh, if you are gonna do multiple lines, try to have them look like one continuous line. And that's just practice, like when you you do one brush stroke and then you try to like continue that brush stroke like this, the better you, you get at doing that. Also, I, you can kind of like erase a little bit the in-between or the scratchy areas to make it look clean. Um, that's definitely something that... Uh, that you could benefit from uh, cleaning up your line art because it'll it'll help the whole clean look thing. All right, so the other eye is uh I haven't drawn anime in so long. Like pure anime and you can see that. So, this lends to a uh, good practice. I'm going to I'm going to paint the the eyebrows cuz it looks like they're just line artists, to be honest. OK, 
Okay, this is like a... You know when you draw, when you, you buy the book, uh, how to draw manga? This is like... You have the, the manga picture and then you're drawing, this is, this is it, this is the equivalent. This is exactly the equivalent of that. You know what, I'm gonna flip my canvas here. Because uh, it's easier for me to draw. I I always loved those those uh, books though. They were always super cool to me. Even though like the drawings are kind of <laughs> kind of the drawings are kind of weird, you know. Uh, sometimes they, they were a bit uh, out there, but. Literally bought that book when I was like 11. Yeah, I think a lot of us did. Okay, also a lot of this is gradients. So once I'll apply like color and stuff, it'll look a lot better. My uh, anime pure style weakness is uh, showing through my lack of practice. But I'd say this is good enough for now for the purpose of um, the rest of the image. Actually, actually I could take this and uh, just raise it a little bit. The same goes with the chin. All right. All right, John, focus. This is about cleanliness, not accuracy on how to draw like Zeronis. Uh, so let's let's skip this. Um, let me continue with the rest of the hair in the very least. But regardless, the process is still the same as far as like oh, she has eyelashes too. I'm I'm like getting hung hung over this. Like, all right, okay. I swear, I'm sorry. I, I swear it's over. Um, so as long as you try to keep it like just a couple of brush strokes here and there over the course of your image, then this will definitely help once you start adding the gradients. Just kind of like doing that, and then uh, da -da -da -da, the star thing. I, I'll, I'll just do the face, obviously. I also think he has a brush. His brush... I don't know, some areas it, it looks like his brush has a little little bit of texture, but I don't know if it's that... It's it's because I like blew the image up and resizing it bigger just gave it texture. Or if it's actually like his brush. I'm just gonna do that. And... Um, Do this, blah, 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 and blah. Hey, okay, we're getting somewhere now, finally. Uh, let me just do a little bit of the neck too, because a floating head without a neck just kind of looks weird. That's a weird champ. That's a weird champ. All right, okay, good enough. So once you have a drawing, even if it's like rough like this, you, um, well, you ignore everything I said so far and keep on trying to make this look like the actual drawing because I just cannot get over, I just cannot get over it. All right, okay, that's a little better. Okay, once you, once you're finally done, with fixing your shit. All right, John. Pay attention, John. You're paying attention. All right. 
So once you're done, okay, it's a little, it's a little better now. Once you're done, uh, you need to make a selection. So, um, let's see, with the dark gray, just make a selection around. So you have a mask. We're gonna mask it. Okay, I'll just do the portrait. And then we can start applying like the colors and showing you what is really making it like what what's really helping with the cleanliness, which I already mentioned. It's honest. Well, to be honest, is nothing new than what I already said. But at least you'll have a visual example. It's gonna be gradients and then tiny. It's like a little bit of just a little bit of texture. All right, let's select the outside and blah, blah, blah. done. Hey, all right. So now, um, once you have a selection, what do you do? You just make a new layer and you can clip that layer onto the selection like that. And now when I paint, magic, well, that kind of looks cool. Um, it's like, it's like persona five, <laughs> giving persona five vibes. Anyways, sorry. Um, you just paint within the shape. That's why we masked it. Um, and uh, da, 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 da. what you first do is you separate your local colors. So you separate the hair from the face, the face from uh, the neck, the neck from everything. Like you just keep going like that, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna use my high intellect to, Okay, let's see if I was close or not. Are you ready, chat? This is the color I picked, and I'm gonna color pick the... Wait, maybe just a little warmer, hold. Okay, here we go. Three, let's see how wrong I was. Three, two, one. Fuck, the value was right, but it was a bit warmer. God dang it. All right, we're gonna go with that. It's close. It was close though. It's very close. Uh, so we're gonna mask the face first. Elementalist Lux. Hey, what's up, Xander? How you doing? Uh, his intellect is so powerful. It makes his connection bug. <laughs> uh, high intellect. Then the stream starts buffering. Uh oh. Wait, are you guys okay? I did drop some frames. Hello? It was because of the white background makes it look colder. Yeah. All right, so I'm just, this is the skin. Are you guys okay now though? I did lose a couple of frames, so it was on my end. We cool? All right. Then we continue. All right, it's okay if it's a little like dirty on the edges. Uh, so that's the skin layer. I'm making another layer with uh, way brighter. Of course, this also doesn't have any shadows so that right now the skin will look very much like a blend of the hair. But once we add um, the rest of the stuff, shadows, etc., it'll look a lot more separate all right outlining the hair and all of like the coolness, the coolness factor will all come from uh, two things. As I said, the gradients, but also there's something else to it, which is he likes to use very subtle, but a variety of 
colors. You can kind of see that on the hair mostly where you have greens, you have pinks, you have blues. Um, and I believe he does that with a selection. It, it looks selected. So you'll, you'll see that in a second. So this is the hair, new layer, um, the, uh, the gold, the gold parts of the hair of the, of the head. Like so. This is where Clip Studio Paint really shines because Clip Studio Paint, you can just, you can mask colors omega easy, like super fast. Um, okay, so there's that. I'm gonna add it here to the gold. And uh, actually this can be too. All right. Okay, cool. Oh, wait, the blue jam in the center. I'll just pick a... Uh, this color is fine. Close enough. All right. So we have the blue in there. Let's clean it up just a little bit. And uh, the eyes, the eyes. Here's the skin layer. I would separate the eyes from the skin too, by the way. And um, the lips and everything. I guess I can do it now too. Now it needs to be warmer. There you go. I'm pretty sure he uses like, it looks like a gradient, but I'll flatten. I've, we'll get the same effect in the end, so it's fine. Just 10 seconds or, or so seconds that live stream couldn't handle your intellect. It's okay, it happens all the time. Okay, so this is good enough for now. Um, okay. No, not okay. The eyeballs. Not okay. The eyeballs. Okay, now okay. Um, once you have this, I'm gonna soften up here the lip. Once you have this uh, and your layers are separate, uh, first of all, you need to do a way better job at adding the colors. Of course, need, needless to say, this whole Silver Scouts cut me some slack check because I need to rush. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like every video ends up being an hour long. Um, okay, so gradients. Let's start with the face, with her face. Interesting. Let's start with the face. Hey, Mask Gnome, how are you doing? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select the face and I believe he uses a multiply layer I think so I'm gonna put a multiply layer on top of all of the flats and he also uses either a round brush with opacity or has a little bit of texture it kind of does. I, I'm going to go with the round brush because everyone has it. And I'm going to go with uh, multiply. Yeah, 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 blah, 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 blah. Sorry. I'm, I'm just happy that I, I got it. It's, um, All right, so you just do the shadows. Smile. So the first thing you want to do before adding gradients is doing your, uh, taking the image like a like a flat, like, like a cell shading. There you go. That's your first step. 
take it into a cell shaded um actually i think this is a little warmer yeah it's a little warmer take it into a cell shaded uh version first there you go I'm just gonna go around and uh adding exactly that and uh afterwards we're gonna go with a you can you can do two ways. You can go with a soft brush or just a smudge brush and like smudge what you have, like this, you know. Either way, either way is fine. I don't know which way he does, but um. Hey, what's up, Ilya? Hi. Sorry. Uh, if I'm not answering chat, it's because I'm focused on this. But I am taking a break between answering questions. If you don't know what silver decodes is, I'll explain once I'm done. But uh, welcome, welcome. With shadows, uh, technically there's shadows on the nose. I'm gonna kind of like add a little bit, but we're, we'll we'll get to this. It's not gonna be as crisp as it is here. But yeah, I would definitely recommend y'all to uh, uh, to first do a cell shaded version. Because it's easier to transform um, sharp to soft, at least in Photoshop, I mean, at least in most applications, I think, than soft to hard. Oh, I'm doing it right now. Shit. Okay, wait. I need a. <laughs> I'm skipping. I'm skipping ahead. Um, I'm leaving you guys behind. I don't want to leave you behind. Um, okay, what other areas do I see? right here but here's looks desaturated for some reason maybe he changed the color to this of the shadows and then of course there's like more to it but we'll we'll get to like the reflection and, and all that we'll we'll get to it um okay so that is um the first step and i'm just cleaning it up a little bit here and there now, I personally like using the smudge tool and kind of like just go ahead and do this. Now, you don't have to do that. You can just like, uh, wait, let me color pick the same. There you go. Uh, you can just go with the soft brush if you want to. Let me just fix some of these areas here. You can go with the soft brush and just go over over those areas, which I believe is what he does. He kind of has that look. Just go ahead and do that and erase away any excess. Um, and uh, okay, so another thing is that I don't know if he uses, I think he just goes with a normal brush. It looks like, uh, or you know what, I'm going to make a new multiply layer and I'm going to see how this is going to look like. So the blues and all the gradients and stuff in the hair is what I'm interested in. Uh, I believe he uses a lot of selections for this. So for example, I'm going to do one part here. Well, I'm going to do all the parts, but you'll see. Like here's the hair. And then kind of like does that, that, and that. And then I hide the selection and kind of go like that. Now he could either be doing selections or he could go with a brush, like with a round brush, paint the whole thing, and then I just give it a gradient on top. Um, I, I personally think that you can get the same look faster uh, with selections. So, and this is where the cleanliness goes. To answer, to continue answering the clean, soft, and bright style, um, a selection will always be like cleaner than a brush or a brush stroke for the most part, unless you're very, very careful. But I'd say it's like the best of both worlds, speed wise, where um, where you just do that. Now I'm gonna get grab green, and all it's all very um, 
soft and what also makes something soft which that i haven't talked about yet is its saturation uh the lack of saturation will make something soft you know kind of like uh you don't even have to go that far like let's say you're making a sauce you know and you you're adding some seasoning or making a cream sauce or whatever the more you add to that seasoning um the more intense in color that'll be for example something that's usually like really really spicy is like you'll see the you look at the color and you know how spicy it is you know what i mean um so using the same way of thinking uh can be applied to color overall let me go back to the purple blue uh so he goes very subtle like i'm not pressing and dragging the whole thing i'm just like blah 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 you know what i mean like i'm just going around and like tapping into into areas uh also the way you use the selection tool is like pretend you're drawing you know pretend you don't have a brush and you're like you're drawing with a with a selection right. and that you'll you'll get the cleaner effects that way too so i'm not when i'm when i'm outlining stuff with the selection tool i'm not thinking about like what i'm outlining on top i mean of course i am but like most of my thinking goes to like am i drawing this shape correctly you know and I, i'm constantly changing my the size of my brush oh yeah wait uh, i forgot i need to take this to a cleaner level so cleaner than what he has so i'm gonna add more gradients more softer gradients than we're gonna go off the sketch from this and try to make it so they kind of like matches the top um i mean given a time limit right that's i'm not gonna spend here like two hours on this um but um the way he has the the the, the quality of the render on the top uh there's a better balance there's a much better balance between soft uh and hard transitions so that's what i'm gonna be working on right now i'm gonna disregard the sketch and i'm gonna go over i just noticed i actually didn't draw the, the hair here but what I would do is exactly this. I would draw, like, for example, the the part of the hair there that I forgot to do the line art of. I was kind of I would just kind of like draw that, and add more form. Now this requires practice. I I was someone who hated. I still not like super fond of it, but it's I'm okay with using selections. Um and I went from hating it to like respecting it. <laughs> that is the best way to put it. What tool is using to paint in only selected areas? Uh this is the lasso tool in Photoshop. I, I think most software has a lasso tool. And then I hide the selection because I hate seeing the little ants looking things. I just kind of like do this. Um, oh, another thing you can use, another brush, if you don't like much selections, um, there's plenty of brushes out there where, um, I'll do a brush stroke here, where it's it's like it has a gradient to it is the best way i could describe it you know so it's like has a hard edge on one end and it kind of like softens up um there's a bunch a bunch of those so you could use these i'll do a little bit of that with this brush i love this brush i use it like a ton um so you can just uh I can use that to replicate sort of like the same effect where where something is sharp on one end and then it kind of like tapers off into um not tapers uh, softens up into a gradient All right. 
So I'm, I'll do I'll do it a little bit here on the hair as well. So you see that, and then you can go with a round brush over that and make it um, make it softer, or you can use a smudge brush. I personally am more fun, fond of the brush of the smudge brush because you can man it's good to learn it because you can manipulate the shape of it. So you're just using one tool for like two, three things. But I could go in here and just like this, get the same with just a round brush like this, and like go over. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's up to preference. I'm just showing you guys like multiple ways to do the same thing as it is per usual uh, in, in, uh, in art is pretty much that times 10. Um, I wanted something. Now, you know what? We're going to continue here with a cleaner sort of look. Yes, I use Control H to hide my thing, my my selection. But you, if it doesn't work for you, you may need to like set it up because I I think I had to. Yeah. All right, gradients. Um, I'm focused too much on this thing. Let me go back to gradients, subtle gradients, because we want to make it clean like the head in there. And oh, what I do a lot is like I'll add a gradient. And I think he does that a lot too. He'll add a gradient and then sort of like uh, with another brush. Uh, and he'll sort of like erase away and he creates this very intricate, like neat uh, texture to it. If he doesn't, then I'd be surprised, but you can get exactly the same effect by just like, I can tap once here on the hair and like create very subtle highlights by erasing away. So this is like, more refined, you know, like, there you go. How cool is this, huh? And it's super easy, too. All right, I literally just like tap once with a big round brush and just erase. And he does that a lot, I think. Or he'll go actually with a, with a, um, if not, then he'll go with a brighter brush and do it like what you'd consider normally. But. Just like, you know, brighter brush, get on with it and you're done. Uh, let me continue doing the hair. John, you're not supposed to copy paste the reference. Okay, good one. Uh, take care, Damien. Thank you for stopping by. Have a good night. Right, and then I'm just gonna do the same here. And maybe add like some more divisions of the hair here and there. But I, th I think you're like, you're getting, I might actually not do the whole thing because I'm thinking of what else can I add to what I said. And I think you get the point, right? Gradients and like confident brush strokes are what making the character, um, well, it's what making his, his uh, um, whole look like very clean. And gradients is a huge, huge part of it. Um, once again, it's like, it's the difference between a clean table versus a very dirty, grungy, old-looking like 
surface, you know. Hey, Woodix. So I'll do I'll do some more though. I'll, I won't stop just now, but um. I'll do uh, the hair, let's call the hair enough, All right? So I can do a little bit of everything everywhere. Uh, so the face, the face, let's do the same. Okay, so the face actually, uh, I'm still on multiply. There's two things happening. So there's a lot of gradients going on around the eyes. And the gradients here will complete the look, I think, quite a lot. Um, I'm being very careful, very gentle with like pressing down with my smudge brush, uh, with my soft brush. And uh, actually, where's the yeah? I'm 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 going back one step to the the cell shaded line art, and I'm gonna smudge the line art into shape. Now again, you don't have to use the smudge; you can use an an eraser or, or even a combination of multiple things is fine. Um, All right, and uh, the star could get a better shadow, like so. And uh, da -da -da -da, the eye, the eye, the corner of the eye is a little too dark. Okay, so back to my new layer, my new multiply layer. Now, it's very much like I added a couple of gradients and now I'm going to erase away. You want a thin brush to do, like, it needs to look refined. So if you go with like a big blunt brush, it kind of, it'll look a little chunky for his style. So you want to go with the thin brush and kind of like just do this little, you know, like I'm going to go over the nose here and then do this little kind of, you know what I was talking about? the. The line art, your line art needs to be thin and like bro broken apart, kind of thing. So you do the same here. Um, his metal render is really cool too. I'll get to that for sure. After I'm done with the head, let's let's do the metal and then we'll call the the video there, because uh, I could always keep going to actually like match it to that, but I started I realized that that might actually take an hour or, or two. Okay. Just increasing the contrast in some of these other areas. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the eyes. I never got into the eyes. And you know what? I'm gonna make a new, a new layer, a normal layer on top. Just to give some of these um, gradients and speculars on. Where's the line art? Oh, there's the line art. Sorry. I do think he paints over the line art at the very, very end. I'll I'll do it right now. But I do think he paints a little bit over the line art for sure. And if I'm wrong, you take my artist license. <laughs> I'm never wrong. Sorry, I need to rotate a little bit because my, my arm angle, I've been trying really hard not to rotate and flip the canvas because I usually do all the time.
I'm gonna do some of these lighter highlights here and there. Same for the mouth. My my mouth. I think I I definitely fucked up on the mouth, but we're gonna ignore that. He likes to out. Another thing that makes things look clean is like outlining the edges, whether it's with shadow or light. There's just something about it that uh, looks very makes it look very very clean. You know, uh, maybe we'll add a little. All right. Okay, um, all right, I could keep going. Um, I'm just gonna do the metal part to show you the texture of the metal, but honestly, you just keep going with what I was doing until it's until it's done. But for the metal part, I'll do the, the top of the, the thing. It, that chin, it's the chin, yeah. I think the chin is a little too long, for sure. But um, good thing this is not a how to draw faces like him. It's a it's a render uh, question, so that saves saves my ass. Okay, so new layer. Um, so I have the gold selected, and let me look. Let me look. Okay, so first of all, it's all about gradients again. Surprise. You add, you add gradients initially. Oh, it's like a mix and match of what I, what I uh, been saying so far. All right, and then you can actually go with the eraser. And erase. Uh, you can go with an eraser that has a, some texture to it. I'm gonna use the. It's uh, a good texture that he kind of has here. He has kind of like something like that, but wait, let me see if I can find something better. I can just go with a round brush and do the same thing. All right, so I just made my round brush thinner. So the way he does the, the, the textures, especially on the cleaner ones, he'll, uh, you can you can erase uh, he, or paint over, it doesn't really matter. Both ways are fine. But it's definitely you lay gradients first, and then you uh, either erase or go over again with a brighter color. And uh, there is one last thing, which is an adjustment layer with uh, the color dodge. I think at least some of these some of these areas look like they would be a little color dodged. I'm gonna pick a brighter color just to do the the highlights. But once again, like thin line art, sort of like going through everything. Uh, the same thing. I say it's literally the same thing over and over again. Um, except you can use some texture for for the metal if you want, which I'm gonna do now. Uh, let's go with uh, this. Kind of works. Yeah, there you go. It kind of works. Like you can use a little bit of texture, something that's like the texture needs to be refined as well. If it's just like a clunky looking texture, then it won't work. It needs to be something that has a fine, a fine look to it. Um, so I could kind of like just do that. Hey, Chris, what's up? All right. Um, I'll I'll do the just that the part on the top, obviously, and then the last thing he does on top of everything, on top of the line art, etc., is color dodge, which will turn his his line art, it, it like turns his line art into color, like it it adds a little a little color to everything. Um, hold on. Uh, shit. Uh, can I... I'm gonna merge everything. Or can I just... 
Can I clip everything? Hello? Blup, blup, blup. Uh, blup, blup. Oh, I can. All right. No, we're good. So we'll go with a color dodge and kind of like for the for the one at the bottom at least. Again, it's like this in intense gradient for for that. But what you want what you want to mainly focus on is uh, the edges. You want to give it a little bit of a fuzzy look for sure. Uh, he really, really, really likes doing that. You can tell. He's like super into that. And you just want to you you just want to make it look sort of sort of fuzzy is the best way I can describe this. Now, of course, my background is gray, not white, so that's gonna be obviously influencing a little bit. But um, yeah, kind of like kind of like this. I think we lost a lot of the there you go values in there. But um I don't know. I think this concludes the clean I definitely fucked up on the jaw there, but just ignore that. Um this has been this episode for uh decodes and I hope it helped with the whole clean cleanliness uh question thing and I'll I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Goodbye.